Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, David, hasn't it been a nice night for a walk? Mm hmm. What are you thinking of? Me? Nothing. Anything worrying you? Nope. Something go wrong at the office? Nope. I bet it's that old pipe of yours. What is? You're moping because the stem broke. It wasn't the stem. If it had been, it could have been repaired. It was the bowl. Well, it wasn't the only pipe you owned. No, but it was my favorite one. I didn't know there were some of the words you used when it cracked. You've led a very sheltered life. <laughs> you don't know very much about pipes either. Ouch! What's wrong? I can't see. Something just flew in my eye. It blow your nose. Oh, that never helps with me. Funny how you don't appreciate your eye until you get something in it. Or your teeth until you get a toothache. Or your stomach until you get a stomachache. Maybe we'd better stop right there. <laughs> Look, here's my handkerchief. I'll, I'll show you how. I know perfectly well how to blow my nose. Anyway, it never gets things out of my eye. It's an exploded theory. It is not. How does your eye feel now? Terrible. Uh, step over here under the street light and let me see what I can do. None of this rolling up my eye like a rug. Stop being a sissy. I am not a sissy. And why do men think that when they look at things, it helps? Hush and open up. I can't open. If I could open, I'd be all right. If we're going to get what's in it out of it, you've got to open it. This is just the doctor in you coming open out. Open up. Oh, all right. There. You satisfied? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, can't see a thing. Wait a second. No, no. You must be blind. Probably just a little speck. It's a big lump of coal. Oh, and let's cross the street. There's a drugstore over there, and the druggist will be able to get it out. I knew it. It'll be that old toothpick and rolling up like a rug stun after all. You want to get that big lump of coal out of your eye, don't you? Can I do anything for you? I uh, wonder if you could help us. My wife just got a sender in her eye. If you stand over here by the light, lady... Can you get it out without running my lid up like a window shade? <laughs> That's funny. It's not at all funny. It's It's... Barbaric, that's what it is. A little more into the light, please. For thousands of years, people have been getting things in their eyes. You'd think they'd have found a better way to get them out. This way always seems to work. It wouldn't be so smug about it for your eye. A little wider. Now look up. Way up. I'm practically upside down. There we are. Where? There on the point of the piece of cotton. I don't see it. You don't see that tremendous piece of coal? A little speck can feel like a mountain sometimes. Or a molehill. I don't think you got it out. It always feels that way in a few minutes. Yep, better now. Can I pay you for this? <laughs> We're not doctors. We just do this to help people. But I, I need a lot of things. Uh, what will you need, miss? Um, um, uh, what do we need, David? I know. Toothpaste. Uh, what kind? Peppermint. You're buying toothpaste, darling, not candy. It's pink, too. Uh, this is the kind I think you want. The pink kind tastes better, I suppose. Is this the kind? Yes. Hmm. <gasps> David, look at that whole case full of pipes. I'm going to buy you uh, one. Thank you, dear, but a pipe is something that you don't buy in a drugstore. We have some wonderful pipes here. I'll show you. Uh, no, thank you. Don't bother. It to look. You buy practically everything else in a drugstore. I've got a nice new number here lined with honey. The first time you smoke it. It burns your tongue off and smells like autumn leaves. <laughs> Well, that's a nice smell. Not to a pipe smoker. Well, I wouldn't know. I never smoked one of these. Fact is, I don't smoke a pipe. Now, uh, here's a good cellar we have. It's got a magnesium coil and distills out all the nicotine. That's what it says on the box. It probably writes underwater, too. <laughs> it doesn't say anything about that. Uh, how about this little briar? No, I don't think so. Thanks. You won't let me buy you a pipe? No. Well, just to show you I don't hold grudges, I think I'll let you buy me a soda. Does it ever occur to you that you're always hungry? No. But seeing a soda fountain makes me hungry. And seeing a beautiful roast beef probably makes you thirsty. Buy me one. You took the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, what do you folks have? 
Uh, chocolate ice cream soda. Chocolate or vanilla cream? Uh, raspberry. In a chocolate ice cream soda? Who said I wanted a chocolate ice cream soda? Ah, uh, you did, miss. I want what you have over there in the picture. Huh? Giant double sundae. Oh, raspberry sundae. And put a little chocolate ice cream in it, too. Chocolate ice cream? And a slice of banana. Combination sundae, huh? Marshmallow or whipped cream? Um, Sounds like the basic formula for a Marshmallow on the bomb. chocolate and whipped cream on the raspberry. Yeah. Here you are, lady. Picture has a maraschino cherry on the top. You want that, too? She likes maraschino cherries. Probably the only reason she ordered what's under it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what'll it be for you, mister? Aren't you going to have one, David? Me? One of those things? I suppose you don't think it's manly to eat a soda. I don't think it's sensible to put all that stuff inside you. Have a limeade. I'll have a Coca-Cola. Mmm. This is good. Oh. I'm glad I wouldn't know. Mm. Thirty-five cents. Thanks. Claudia, you're eating that awfully quickly. I'm awfully hungry. They make shipwrecked men eat very slowly. I'm not shipwrecked men. There, almost finished. All right, take your time. Let's go home. You know, David, it's funny about men. It sounds like it was profound. It doesn't mean anything. You know, I wonder if most of the profound things in life are just unfinished sentences. I'm not being profound, just observant. All right. What's funny about men? Well, they're really much more possessive than women. I always thought it was the other way around. Now, take your razor, for instance. You don't like me to use it. I don't like you to use it to take the paint off the window glass. No, not that, but you... You really don't like me to touch it. Is that being selfish? I didn't say selfish. I said possessive. It's your newspaper in the morning and your office and, 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 and your pipe. Of course it's my pipe. What would you want to do with a pipe? Blow soap bubbles? No, but if I move it, you look at it closely to see if I've scratched it. <laughs> and when I asked you if it wouldn't be good to boil it out over the stove, you simply exploded. I did not explode. Where I stood, you did. You gave a dress rehearsal of what you'd do if I ever did. Did what? Boil your pipe out. Well, we can forget about the pipe for a while. It's broken now. Mm, I'm glad I didn't do it. I wish you had. Why? I can't be as mad at myself for being so clumsy as I could have been at someone else. <laughs> well, here we are at home. Did you have a nice walk? David. What? Let's walk a little more. Down the avenue with the wind blowing in our faces. We've just finished a long walk. Aren't you tired? I was, but I'm not now. You know, I feel a little queer. Anything particular? No, just a little... Queer. Yes. Like something I ate didn't agree with me. David, you didn't taste anything funny about the supper. No, no, I, I thought it was a grand supper. It isn't bad, it's just... Just queer. Mm. Probably something you ate. Couldn't be if you feel all right. Could be. I feel fine. Of course, I didn't eat that poisonous concoction at the soda fountain. You don't think a little thing like I that? I think just that. Come on, we'll walk a couple of blocks and you'll feel fine. Well, here we are almost home again. And I feel fine. I feel marvelous. With all this walking, I've worked up an appetite. I could eat a horse. We're fresh out of horses. I'd settle for a sandwich. Fresh out of sandwiches. What's the matter, don't you think I'm worth feeding? <laughs> no bread. I mean, there's just enough for breakfast. Well, how about a piece of cake and a glass of milk? And don't say fresh out. Then what's another way of saying it? Because the kitchen just as clean empty as Mrs. Jack Spratt's platter. Who is Mrs. Spratt and what's she got to do with it? Skip it. I arrange it that way. On the night I defrost the icebox, it's my system to have an empty larder. Mm. Most of the trouble in the world comes from people who have systems. You picked this particular night to take me out and exercise me into a ravenous hunger. Drugstore's here at the corner. Piece of cake and a glass of milk. Fine, fine. Then I'll be able to sleep. You're right with you, folks. They have some really nice pound cake with raisins in it. That's good. Hey, see what that kid's ordering? When I was his age, that was my passion. What? A chocolate walnut sundae. 
walnuts and syrup. Sounds like a fairly innocent passion. It wasn't. They used to cost ten cents. Oh. And one time, I earned a half a dollar cleaning out a backyard. Yes. And I ate five of them in a row. You were a pig. They were wonderful. Oh, uh, hello. It's you folks again. What do you have, lady? Another one of those, uh... Super de look special? I don't think I'll have anything, thank you. But my husband will have a glass of milk and a piece of cake. I've changed my mind. I, I'll, uh, I'll have what you just served that youngster over there. Chocolate water or something? Is that what it is? Uh, look, Claudia, if you don't feel well, I better get some bicarbonate of soda. Oh, I feel fine now, really, really. Well, do... just to be on the safe side, you can't be too careful. A, a box of bicarbonate. I'll send it over to the counter for you. Always wise to have stuff like that around the house. Yeah, hey, Mr. Chocolate Water Sunday. Sure you won't have anything, Claudia? No, nope, not a thing. Well, I, I am a little thirsty. Um, maybe I have a Coke. <laughs> you never can resist anything, can you? Oh, I learned my lesson tonight, all right. And here's a package from the other counter. I see, it's 60, 60, 65, 75, I'm... Uh, Shy a dime, Claudia. I haven't got a dime. I have a quarter. That'll do. Uh, thanks. Uh, keep the change. You should thank me, too. It was my quarter. Thank you, too. All right. Oh, David, it's been a wonderful evening. Just us two together. Lovely night and a long walk. And... Mm. What's the matter? Didn't you really enjoy it? Mm-hmm. You really are moping about your pipe again, aren't you? Mm, haven't thought of it in the last five minutes. Well, here we are. Isn't it grand to have our own home and be going up to it? And... Mm-hmm. Uh, look, darling, why don't you go on upstairs and I'll come along in a little while. Why? What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. I'd just like to walk a little bit more. Darling, you want to walk more? No, I do not. What I want to do is to break a vicious circle. A what? A vicious circle. We take a simple walk after dinner, and you get hungry and have to eat some horrible mixture. Pardon? Then we have to walk further until you feel better and I get hungry. But like a darn fool, I... You know, that Sunday was awfully rich and sweet. I'll walk with you, darling. I'd be glad to. And have this performance go on all night? This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. more factories and offices are installing those familiar red coolers so that employees can pause for a Coke and work refreshed. But you don't have to install any extras in your kitchen. Your refrigerator will do nicely. All you have to do is see that it's well stocked with Coca-Cola. Then you can pause in the midst of your household duties whenever you feel the need and refresh yourself with ice-cold Coke. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. (laughs) 